Hey there, I'm Terry, and I'm the intuitive healer for folks who have anxiety and want to access their soul evolution and intuition. There's more than meets the eye here as we chat and hang out in these episodes that have spiritual, esoteric, multidimensional, somatic, quantum techniques, tools, and tips to help you get unstuck and move you forward in your day-to-day life. So join me in discovering your path to help you clear anxiety of the past, align your energy to the present, and create your new future. Well, hello, hello, hello. Hi there. Hey, everybody. How is your heart today? How's that wonderful dynamic heart of yours? I hope it's well. Today, we're going to talk about how anxiety messes plays with, interferes with your intuition. But before that, I just wanted to uh, explain any weird snoring noises in the background. Some of you guys know that I have a Shih Tzu mix puppy. I don't know if she's a puppy. She's a young kid of two years old and she's recovering from having a surgery. So she's here with me and she's in snore mode. (laughs) So she's snoring. So you might hear that. So, uh, you know, I, I can't control what goes on around me, especially a Shih Tzu knees mix. She's got some Pekingese in her. That's why I call her a Shih Tzu knees. All right. All right. All right. All right. Enough, Terry. Let's get to today's topic. Anxiety as a spiritual empath, right? So being a spiritual empath is already hard enough, right? Because basically you're a sponge. You're an emotional sponge. Your emotional intelligence is super, super high. Right. So obviously, if you guys remember anything from any of these podcasts or working with me or any of the other content that I produce, emotions are energy in motion. Right. And the body is designed to move energy frequencies, energy, energy vibrations. Right. These wavelengths of light. The body is designed to have those light waves move through it like a pipe like a conduit right so energy influences energy so there is constant energy exchange with any other electromagnetic field any other energetic field right from lights to cars to animals to people to electronics to everything right even a piece of paper it's made of energy and remember, something that is more physical, more tangible, or that the body can detect, right? Because the brain is processing these light waves in any one of our human senses. It means it's a slower moving vibrational frequency, right? So as an empath, as a sponge with super high emotional intelligence, it, you're going to have a higher sensitivity to energy, right? So being able to manage your anxiety is going to be able to help you discern whether that energy that is moving through your body, you have to take responsibility for and accountability for or not. Because it's going to move through your body anyways, (laughs) right? Because again, that's what the human body does. It's got energy centers that are constantly pumping, constantly moving, right? And so incoming energy is going to be going through the body, right? But don't forget, we have a mental body, we have an emotional body, and we have a physical body. So all three bodies are involved in this humanity, in this human process, right, as a spiritual being. So what anxiety is, is excess energy in the body. There's just too much energy going on in the body. The question becomes, is that energy yours or is it someone else's? And are you going to take responsibility and accountability for it and move it through your body? Or are you going to say, no, this isn't mine. Go away and expel it. Let it bounce off of you. Get rid of it. Bye-bye it. Yes? 
So when you understand not only how energy works, but what is actually going on, it makes it easier for you as this empath, right? As this spiritual being having a human experience, it helps you navigate your way through your humanity, your human experience so much easier. How many times have you taken blame for something that you didn't do, right? Well, now that kind of piggybacks on the human experience, right? Because as humans, we are taught certain ways to act, to be, to respond, right? So throw into the mix any survival mechanisms or coping skills that you learned as a little human. (laughs) You got yourself a recipe here for a hot mess, right? So if we have this God-given gift of intuition which is all energy-based, right? And we have a whole bunch of incoming energies that influence our electromagnetic field, electromagnetic field, our aura. What are we going to do with all of it when you don't know what to do with all of it and it comes at you and you don't know what is yours and what you need to be accountable and responsible for and what doesn't? It's going to cause you a lot of headaches, <laughs> maybe physical headaches too. Remember, mental body, emotional body, and physical body. And by the time something drops into your physical body or your physical reality, it is manifested from the mental world, moved into the emotional world, and then dropped into the physical physical world, right? That's the process of manifestation. So... Let's just take, for example, oh, I don't know. Sometimes I'll walk by somebody just randomly, like at the supermarket or a mall or whatnot. And all of a sudden I'll get a stomach ache, like my stomach starts to hurt, right? So what's going on? is that I've manifested a stomach ache, right? Or I should say a man, uh, there's been a manifestation of a stomach ache. So that's my physical body being influenced energetically by the energy of stomach ache, right? So as someone who is emotionally, remember, energetic, in movement, energy in motion, someone who is sensitive energetically, I'm going to pick up on that energetic frequency of stomach ache. Right? But if I haven't done a good enough job of keeping my energy in alignment, strong, fierce, right? boundaried, I guess you can say also, then that energy is going to influence my energetic field without permission. If I have no boundaries set, if I don't know how to manage my own energy, it's going to sort of kind of, I don't know how you want to say it, like hostage it hostage is that a word it's gonna take over and hold my energy hostage influence it right so physically i'm experiencing the stomach ache right and so that's a certain amount of energy that's being influenced right so take another example i don't know i'm in a bookstore and all of a sudden i feel sad (laughs) right how do I know that that sadness is mine because someone who is sensitive emotionally to energy I could easily think that that depression is mine feel what that depression feels like in my body as mine once again I have been taken hostage by outside energy 
because I did not take care of my energy. I didn't set boundaries, none of that. So when someone is experiencing anxiety, the, the, the thing about anxiety is that anxiety lies. Anxiety creates scenarios and situations by totally impacting, by accumulating and building excess energy that's most likely not even yours, right? It's come from the outside because your boundaries are shitty. Let's just face it. But as a human, I mean, it's normal. It's natural. We're not going to 100% going to be boundaried and like perfect because there is no such thing as perfectionism. We're not always going to be in alignment all the time. We get it. We lose it. We get it. We lose it. We get it. We lose it. It's part of the human experience. It's how soul evolution works. Remember, we're always working. Our human self is always working to evolve the soul. So we can't always be love and light, love and light. Good vibes here, right? We, we can. It's just not physically possible, especially, especially when there are so many electromagnetic fields out there bumping into each other. And not every electromagnetic field that's out there is nice, pretty, pristine, shiny, and happy. So as an electromagnetic field bumping around other electromagnetic fields, we are going to influence not only each other, but get influenced, yes? So what anxiety does when there's too much energy in the body, it's going to accumulate and it's going to start creating a new thought process. See, remember, we're very, very creative and imaginative beings, right? So anxiety likes to have outcomes and results now, not later, now. And in order to get to that outcome and result, the anxiety, if we want to call it an entity, you want to call it um, a parasite, sure, let's just go ahead and do that. Just remember, it's energy, yes? So this parasite, this entity of anxiety is going to affect your energy And it is going to create really imaginative circumstances that are not real. There's no truth to them because thoughts and fears are not facts. As a way of trying to get itself into control. So it's going to create circumstances, situations. This is all in the imagination. Remember, we're influenced. So anxiety is an energy in itself. And when it's stuck and it's not being moved through the body, it's really hard to balance, to regulate, to harmonize who you are, your being, right? And it's the soul that's out of control when this is happening. Your human body is taken over. The lower soul, the entanglement of physical reality is getting in the way. And the higher soul has lost control until something happens where the lower soul is in contact with the higher soul. And then that anxiety energy pops So it either disperses or it just continues, or if you know how, or if you get control, your soul can get back into control, then you can move that excess energy through the body again and start moving evenly again, or at least just flowing, right? Let's just get that energy moving. Remember, anxiety is trapped energy, excess energy in the body. It's not going anywhere. So anxiety will lie to you saying you have to do this right now as just a way of trying to get itself to be controlled, right? As a way to kind of like, nothing to see here, move along, which is all BS because there's plenty to see here and must move along. 
So when you're experiencing anxiety because it doesn't tell you the truth, and intuition is the truth, you've got a big old block there. And then what happens is the louder voice or the noise, once again, is that lower entangled part. It's the human part of the spiritual being. And it's the ego. And the whole idea of the ego really is to keep the human alive. That's it, really. That's its real nature. We can't poo-poo the, the ego because we need the ego for two things, at least. One, to keep the body alive. And two, without the body, there's no way we can evolve the soul. So we need the ego. The ego kind of gets a bad rap. But when you learn how to manage, regulate, balance, harmonize your energy, your energy, then when those outside energies or those other influences, because remember, you're going to get them. You're a sponge, right? You are super sensitive. You are highly emotional, emotionally um, intelligent. So they're going to come at you. But how boundaried are you? Right? Because if you're going to take on, accept, allow, receive outside energy, you got to know how to balance and move that through your body. Because that's just going to accumulate into more energy, which is not even yours. That stomach ache, that depression, no, no, not mine. And if you can't discern what is yours and what is not yours, then anxiety is going to get worse. And then block your intuition, which is truth. Right? So you have to remember that everything is energy in your human, known as you. So my human in this incarnation is known as Terry, is meant to move these energies through the body. Now, of course, there are different ways to move the energies through the body. Right? And you're not just moving it through the physical body. You're moving it through the mental body, the emotional body, and the physical body. So there's a lot that goes on here in learning. Learning. Humans don't come with manuals, okay? Learning how to manage this energy. Your energy. Right? The energy of your human and then all of those other electromagnetic field energies out there. Everybody bumping into everybody. Right? Yeah, there are ways to do it. That's what I do one-on-one with people. I work with them. Right? And it takes time because we live in a space-time continuum where in order to move through space, it takes time. And what are we moving, you guys? We're moving the human through space. And it takes time to move that human through space because that human is made of very low, dense, thick, slow-moving energy, which is mass or matter, right? Right? So learning to balance your energy, to regulate it, to harmonize it, not an easy feat. Man, do you have to be brave and courageous to do it because it takes time to recalibrate a certain momentum that you've been operating in for so long, right? Which is why we have to practice compassion, kindness, and mercy on ourselves. And ask those also from the divine. Because the divine is energy. And when you learn and you know how to understand the mechanics of energy, how energy works, and how you can even manipulate it, you've got a beautiful relationship with the divine. Right? 
And there's always room for improvement, you guys. That's the whole idea of soul evolution. Remember, the soul is using your human to evolve. So there's always room for improvement. Anybody who comes off or says, oh, I already know what to do. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. I can do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In any field, especially when they're learning something. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got this. I got this. They are operating from lower soul. And they are in a, or they're about to really elevate (laughs) and evolve their higher soul through a very, most likely not so pleasant experience because the human body needs to have it in a physical, material way so that the higher soul can experience it. And there's a lot that goes on here, you guys. And this, this is not easy to do. It's not easy to do, which is why you have to be really brave and courageous If you're going to do any internal work, deep reflection, um, transformation or healing. Because remember, everything starts off, everything is energy. And it starts in the mental world, drops to the emotional world known as the astral. And then into the physical reality, right? And it takes time to move your human from one place to another. And if there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be, man, you got to practice that kindness, compassion, and mercy on yourself. Ask it from the divine, right? Because you're, you're, you're collapsing the space-time continuum when you do that. And the best way to do that is to not have this interference of this accumulated energy that is lying to you (laughs) right oh my god I'm only laughing because I look back at um you know these last nine months that I've been experiencing personally and wow it feels like my human's been tested but really what it is is me moving various energy frequencies through my body and therefore manifesting certain experiences which is definitely evolving my soul. And I'm realizing that the more I'm doing or learning about, let's say, spirituality or certain techniques or, you know, even just experimenting because part of my alter personality is a mad scientist. I like to experiment and be in curiosity, which helps me manage my anxiety. Um, the less I actually know, I think I know things I think I know how something's going to go or I can, you know, make this really great prediction. And then, bam, the less I know. Which in a way is really cool because when you do learn how to manage and, and balance your anxiety, you can step into curiosity and you can say, well, let's play around with this thing. I, I wonder how this is going to go. And then things don't get so scary anymore, right? Because again... Anxiety likes to scare you as a way of trying to get control. But when you realize, no, 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 anxiety, I'm not going to be your bitch anymore. (laughs) You know, then you start saying, okay, I'm curious. Let's see what happens if I do this, that, or the other thing. And you move that energy through your body. Then you become, you learn emotional, remember, energy and motion, emotional mastery, right? And the more, the what's going to happen at first, I'm telling you, what's going to happen at first, if you do decide, let's say you want to work with me, right? What's going to happen at first is it's going to get worse before it gets better because there's a lot of heavy, dense, thick, dark energy at the bottom, that needs to come up and make its way up. And so it's that's why things are always hard at first. And then it gets easier. And that's why people don't want to change. People don't want to change because they don't want to have those bad feelings. I get it. But you can't break through to the other side without confronting those the the darkness or those that heavy dense thick energy and it's not evil you guys it's just slower moving vibrational frequencies right 
It's those parts of us that we've buried deep, deep inside and they build, they build, they build, causing anxiety. But as soon as you start to shed some light on them, they get cleaned out and cleared out, right? So collapsing time. Got to be brave and courageous, right? Inner work, deep change. You're tired of the life that you want, starts off in the mental world, goes to the emotional world, and then drops into your physical world. You're the only one that can do that, right? And learning how to balance your anxiety so that you can access your intuition so you know just your next steps. Man, what a tool that is. But that anxiety is going to block it. It's going to lie to you. It's going to tell you things. It's going to tell you to to take moves, go in certain directions, take certain routes or paths that are not necessarily the best for you. I shouldn't say they're they're not the best for you. They're just not going to get you there the quickest way. So that is why anxiety is really a tough, tough, tough thing to have when you're a spiritual empath because you're already plugged in. Like, you get it. No one needs to explain these things to you. Nobody needs to teach you about your higher sensitivities. You're already plugged in. You just don't know what to do when you're blocked with this anxiety. Right? Which way do I go? Which way do I go? How do I go? How do I move? And then your survival skills will come into play right so you're back down to using your human it's a dance there's a finesse to this and humans are not taught how to do this I mean I had to learn and I keep learning and the more I learn the less I know and I'm actually okay with that because I what's been revealed to me is my alter ego which is mad scientist right? So what's your alter ego? Are you a mad scientist? Are you curious? Do you want to know if your life can improve or change? Are you ready? Can you step into your courage? Can you step into that bravery? Can you ask the divine for the compassion, for the mercy, for the help? Because I guarantee a billion, gazillion, trillion, it's a real number, you guys, (laughs) percent that if you're listening to this something that I'm saying to you is resonating you and kind of shaking up loosening up some of that um you know dark heavy thick dense energy that wants to be released something in you is being what's the word activated maybe you know, and it's not that you're wrong or bad. So I don't want you to get that. You're not broken. Nothing's wrong. You just don't know what to do with that excess energy. I had to learn. And like I said, I keep learning. So I hope you got something out of this, even if it's just a little bit of a kick in the butt or activation to just try and get some control over the anxiety that you're having because as a spiritual empath you have a superpower right <clears throat> but if you're going to be the sponge and don't know what to do with all of that liquid <laughs> and you're just accumulating and absorbing all of this energy and it's being stuck your anxiety has got to be off the charts and you have my compassion and my sympathy because as humans, we'll have flare-ups, yes? And it's okay, it's normal, it's natural. Again, it's our human that's evolving our soul, but wouldn't it be nice to know what to do with it? That's all I'm saying. Wouldn't it be nice to know what to do with it, how to do it, and then to actually be able to do it so that you know what is yours and what you can be responsible for and what isn't? Because I know as someone who's highly sensitive and highly empathic that I am a people pleaser as one of my coping mechanisms, right? And I'm sure you are too. So 
you're okay. You're not broken. You just need to learn how to manage and do all this. It's okay. You're okay. All right, you guys. So take care of that beautiful, wonderful, uh, sincere, truth-seeking, highly evolved, emotion, beautifully emotional heart of yours. Okay? And just stay connected. Just stay connected. Well... Our time in this now moment together has ended, but another now moment is on its way. Thank you so much for joining me in this human journey and listening to this podcast, The Portal with Terry Huberman. I sure hope you're getting something out of it. I'm here to help you clear anxiety from the past, align your energy into the present, and help you create your future. My prayer for you is to find the peace and calmness in any given now moment so you can recognize when blessings are afoot and you get to choose your next adventure. Be curious and stay connected. You can always find me at terryhuberman.com. Bye now.